Then in Malawi is like a bridge whereby poor people used to cross from the dry land to a green land. From the poverty situation to a place where they get everything. Hi guys, my name is Adam Balaj. Welcome to the Malawi Documentary. In today's episode, let's talk about the Malawi, the Development Initiative Network Malawi, and everything that you need to know about it. By now, you probably figured out that the Malawi is a non-profit organization working in Chikova district in the southern region of Malawi. If you don't know where Malawi is, let me show you real quick on the map. It's right here between Tanzania, Zambia, and Mozambique, just right across Madagascar. The organization was uh, established back in the beginning in 2012 to assist vulnerable communities in the uh, Tanja and and uh, with the aim to tackle regional poverty by giving the communities access to etiquette resources and, uh, and training. They are constantly partnering up with local, uh, international and uh, governmental organizations with the focus on improving uh, water sanitation, healthcare, disease prevention, food insecurity, sustainable agriculture development and uh, education quality. As you can hear, they try to cover a broad area, but the organization is not the biggest in the world. There are uh, only five full-time employees, from which the first one is our dear friend, the boss, uh, Anderson Frey Biliat. He is the executive director of uh, Team Malawi. He spent his past seven years uh, by managing the organization's everyday life. Uh, other than him, we have uh, Charity Vanya, Programs Monitoring and Evaluation Officer, Nenani Kachamba project officer, McDonald Chimaliro, uh, finance officer, Ruben Jones, the fundraising manager, and Thomas Botta, assistant human resource manager. You might think the team is quite small, and yes, you are absolutely right, but since it's a number of the organization and it's not the biggest in the world, they can't uh, re afford to have more people than this. But they are always looking for new team members, uh, whether we are talking about interns or um, volunteers, both international and local. So if this is something that you would like to try out or you just got interested, you can reach out to them and read more information on uh, Workaway or uh, on their website, the links in the description. But let's talk about something more interesting and uh, what the organization is actually doing. At the moment there are four uh, projects. Uh, the first one is Tisamala. It's a social program that provides food, education, uh, healthcare and tools to people suffering from HIV and AIDS in the area. There is a lack of knowledge about HIV and AIDS in the community that leaves stigma on these people suffering from the disease. They are getting isolated and in order to reduce this, the organization uh, makes an ongoing campaign in the city and they are making support groups for these people in the different villages uh, where they are taking care about their uh, general well-being, they are taking the medicine and also they are giving them access to tools and teaching them how to use them uh, so they can generate a stable income. For example, we are talking about bicycles uh, so they can create a taxi business or giving them lands where they can grow vegetables and crops which they can sell on the local markets later and the same applies for uh, livestock. But let's talk about this in a separate episode because Lily was especially active in these support groups uh, during those uh, eight weeks we were there. The next project is uh, the Girls Voice Amplifier and uh, I was talking about this with Anderson and it turned out there is a huge problem in Malawi with child marriages about 42% uh, of women between the age of 20 and 24 became married before the age of uh, 18. The organization would like to combat this uh, alarming rise. So first of all they are uh, making a constant campaign to change the community's mindset about this topic and uh, they are making consultation for at-risk girls to support them and uh, they are sharing fundamental knowledge between not just the girls but the teachers in schools and the parents. The next project is the preschool program where they are providing educational resources, uh, financial support for teachers and uh, buildings in which schooling can take place. They would like to improve the quality of education and accessibility for the local children. At the moment they are operating with uh, eight primary schools and uh, approximately 3,000 children. They created youth groups for these students and also they are organizing uh, talks about hygiene, uh, healthcare and HIV and AIDS. And finally, the last project is the Women's Voice program, which is for uh, previously unemployed and impoverished uh, women. They are teaching them necessary skills and uh, giving them access to tools needed for generating an income. 
for example, giving them sewing machines and teaching them how to do tailoring uh, so they can create a clothing business. So they can develop self-reliance and uh, became uh, independent. If you would like to hear about more uh, projects, check out their website. Uh, you can find information about uh, past, uh, current and future projects as well. Links in the description. The organization has a small office at the edge of Chikova. Let me show you around. Good morning everyone, let me show you the office. Welcome to the one and only headquarter of the Development Initiative Network, Dim Malawi. There is a hidden path coming down to the building from the road and uh, getting through the entrance we are in the main hall. Uh, as you can see this is the biggest room of the office which is uh, used in various occasions. In the day-to-day -day life normally the interns taking their place here. They usually hold organizational meetings or uh, welcoming guests. Uh, sometimes they are just making workshops or uh, uh, they are practicing new skills or just teach some new stuff to the interns. And in the corner they also have a storage room uh, where they keep all their tools. For example, these are sewing machines uh, which were used in the Women's Voice program. The participants were uh, learning on these and uh, fun fact, a couple of weeks ago they uh, almost got stolen, uh, which is a not so funny story for another time. Going further in the back of the building, there are three small offices which are used by the staff. The first one on the left is for McDonald and Nanani and also Lily joined them here for the time being. Uh, the second one in the line is for Charity and Thompson. And the last one at the very back of the building is the executive director's place, Anderson's office. And also I got the opportunity to sit here with him on a daily basis. There's also a bathroom and the toilet on the right side of the hallway. Yeah, so this is the bathroom and I think it wasn't used for a while. Uh, or at least I hope so. And right next door there's also a toilet with a tap in the smaller room but usually the water doesn't run so we have to use a bucket uh, filled up with water from the well just right outside of the office. As you can see they don't have too much, there are just a couple of chairs, desk, uh, notebooks old and they really use laptops. They were struggling before uh, but when the pandemic hit back in 2020 they almost had to shut down entirely and uh, because of this they didn't have you know, fundraising, they didn't have any projects to work on uh, so they were living day by day and uh, hoping for the best. But now that the pandemic is, seems like going away they could start operating again as usual. So I think it's not a surprise to say that uh, these videos are just intended to raise awareness about the organization and uh, what they are doing, but to help them as much as possible. So if you would like to support their cause, there are a couple of things that you can do. The first of them, and I think that's the most obvious, you can give uh, donations uh, through the website, the link in the description. If you would like to try it yourself, uh, you can go there as an intern or a volunteer. Doesn't matter if you go for a week, uh, a couple of weeks or half a year. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of talent you have, I'm sure they are going to find the right uh, field. I highly recommend it. And the last one, if you know or if you are part of an organization that would like to join forces, reach out to these guys uh, and find out something. With that being said, that's it for today, guys. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comment down below. Hit the like if you enjoyed the video, ring the bell if you are notified, subscribe if you aren't already. And see you guys in the next one. Bye.